Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are finally doing a full realism overhaul simulation of the Falcon Heavy demo flight. So let's kick off by listening to this SpaceX countdown and just check out the world's most powerful rocket. You guys are going to love this. Falcon Heavy is configured for flight. T minus 15, stand by for terminal count. And nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Two. Ignition. Up. Oh, Falcon Heavy. So, yes, as I was watching this on the live stream, I was absolutely shaking. I was just hoping, hoping so much that this rocket would get up without exploding all over the launch pad. There was a lot of concern about this one, but of course the rocket performed beautifully. Just like the real mission, I programmed the central core here to throttle itself right down as it was passing that 200 meters per second mark. This is the full mission, all booster landings, everything in realism overhaul and real solar system. I could not think of how to get this much more realistic than what I've got it here, so I hope you enjoy this. It has taken so long to program these rockets to actually behave themselves. This is a full simulation done in Kerbal Space Program. Those of you that are familiar with my channel would be very familiar with the game. For those of you that aren't, it is a fantastic simulation game that allows you to have a lot of fun with space missions. The Falcon Heavy, as you probably have already heard, is the most powerful operation rocket in the world by a factor of two, two times more powerful than any other currently flying rocket. Its ability to lift huge masses into orbit is absolutely staggering. There are nine Merlin engines attached to each of the three cores here, making for a total of 27 Merlin engines, generating more than 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. And there is only one rocket in history that has been able to push more mass into orbit and that of course was the Saturn V moon rocket taking men to the moon the last time back in 1973. Now the most nerve-wracking part of this mission for me personally was waiting for the two side boosters to cleanly separate and come back down. I was beside myself at this point. Major event coming up with side booster shutdown and separation. Side boosters. Successful separation. We're coming up on Now, if you actually watch the live footage and compare the velocities and the altitudes to what I have simulated here, you'll notice that it is very, very similar. And while we wait for those to coast back, to the space center. In the meantime, we are going to switch back to the core booster in all its glory and watch the stage two separation. The velocity that the core is traveling here is quite a bit higher than a regular Falcon 9 mission, which means it needs to wipe off even more energy to come to do its boost back burn to land on the drone ship. And then of course we come up to the amazing fairing separation scene. We all knew what was under here, but we had no idea how awesome this was going to be. Life 
How awesome was that scene? It was just incredible. While that was happening, we had the central core booster doing its boost back burn to allow it to come down safely on the drone ship. Of course, that's not what really happened in the real flight, but we are going to make this booster land on the drone ship. The core booster does take a little longer to get back just due to the extra velocities that it's doing, so switching back now to the side boosters, which are now falling down below the 100km mark. Now, due to a few small limitations in the game, uh, I just needed to do two small corrections here to make sure that both of the boosters were coming down on target. Basically, uh, the reason for that limitation is I can only get a good estimate on one, the active vessel, so I need to switch back. So you'll see here, a very small correction here for booster one. And switching over to booster two, a very small correction there as well. That just brings us right down over the top of the launch pad here as we're coming down. And for this double booster landing, it would be irresponsible of me to not share the audio from Kerbal Space Academy. Go and check out this video after you've watched this one. It is an awesome bit of footage. Get your burn shut down. Oh, yeah, there they are. Where? They are. Right there. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my God. Nice. Oh, 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 yeah. Come on down, baby. Woo. Gotcha. I see it. Yeah, I got them. Oh, they're there. Oh, my God. They're right there. Yeah. They're, they're so close. They're right there. Yeah, baby. Look at that. You've got to be kidding me. Come on, baby. Come on. Yes. Take a landing. Dude. Oh. You've got to be kidding me. Oh. What? Oh, wow. Stick it. Oh, my God. Stick. Two landings, you oh, wow. Double sided boost, baby! Yeah. Two landings, And the Falcons have landed! OZ1, OZ2, both side boosters have touched down. Landing after 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 the Center Core will be attempting its landing on the autonomous spaceport drone ship. Uh, you may also be hearing the second engine cut off. Oh, check on your screen. Sometimes this footage goes out when it approaches the drone ship and the heavy vibrations make it lose signal. So there was loads of things going on while the two boosters were landing. Firstly, we did have the engine cut off for Stage 2. Stage 2 is now in orbit. The footage here now is the central core doing its re-entry burn. In the real mission, the main core booster was supposed to land on the offshore drone ship. Of course, I still love you. It missed the target though by 100 meters because two of the three engines failed to fire. Later on on Twitter, Elon Musk said that there was not enough ignition fluid to light the outer two engines after several three-engine relights. I don't have that problem though, kicking off the three-engine burn here, and we're going to switch the two outer engines off just as we get above the drone ship. There we go. Now these Merlin engines do have a limited minimum thrust, so we have to hit the deck at exactly the right velocity uh, before it starts rising back up into the air, and there we go, touchdown right on target on the drone ship. Have a look at that. Sadly, of course, the real central core hit the ocean at around 480 kilometers an hour or 300 miles an hour, uh, an impact which also damaged two of the drone ship thrusters. Luckily, it didn't hit the drone ship directly, though, otherwise that would have really <laughs> damaged it. So I did spend loads and loads of time trying to get these landings perfected using the Kerbal Operating System mod, and I was able to repeatedly land this booster and even test out some finer corrections. I just had it coming in off course just a little bit, and you can see the rocket will actually correct that and uh, come back down on target. So the three engine burn switching to the one, slight correction there, and down we come right again on target. That was more from the perspective of the camera shot that we usually see when watching the live streams. Our second stage with the Tesla Roadster mounted on top of it is still up here in orbit now, awaiting its next burn phase. Now there was quite a few news stories and all sorts of people around Twitter uh, basically commenting on how ridiculous this entire idea was. Why waste all this money to put a Tesla Roadster into space? Such an absurd thing to do, right? Well, launching a Tesla Roadster into outer space may have been ridiculous, but the vehicle is far from being a worthless piece of space junk. Remember that this was the Falcon Heavy demo flight. They don't want to put anything important on this thing, and there was a lot of risk that the vehicle would not make it to orbit. There was even a lot of people that thought it was quite likely that the vehicle might not even make it off the launch pad. 
just running the camera here in time warp mode, just awaiting the correct time to do our ejection burn from the Earth's sphere of influence. This burn needs to be done at the exact correct time because we need to make sure that we are leaving Earth's sphere of influence in a prograde direction, meaning we are actually accelerating out away from the Earth. And the idea here is to get into an orbit which will take us past Mars or past Mars's orbit. So yes, more about why this isn't just worthless space junk. Now generally a new rocket is loaded with what they call a mass simulator. Often this is just a big slab of concrete or metal and uh, this lets them accurately test how these expensive rockets will behave as they blast through the skies. And you need to remember that these dummy simulations serve two very important functions. First of all, most SpaceX customers, especially like the US government, pay the spaceflight company to launch extremely expensive, and when I say expensive, I'm talking hundreds of millions of dollars in some cases. Some of these satellites are just extremely expensive, much more expensive than the full launch vehicle. The Falcon Heavy is priced at around $90 million, so it would make no sense at all to pop on a satellite that's worth a few hundred million dollars on top of a vehicle that may not actually make it to orbit. So as the stage 2 fully empties out you can see we are getting our orbit trajectory there well above Mars, somewhere in between Mars and Jupiter in this case. I may have had just a little less mass up on my rocket compared to real life, but it, uh, it did end up in a fairly similar orbit compared to what Elon Musk tweeted here, uh, just a little further out by the looks of that, so yes that's awesome. So instead of having a huge slab of concrete or metal orbiting around the solar system, it was a much better publicity stunt to send the very first car into space. This is the sort of mission that inspires, the sort of thing that makes us all excited about the future of the space exploration industry. This is the thing that gets us excited. When are we going to the moon? When are we going to Mars? Let's make it happen. Then of course as the Roadster was leaving the sphere of influence of the Earth, we were watching it on a live stream with the Earth in the background slowly rotating. It was the most magical thing. In this case we have little Jebediah here who's uh, the main character from Kerbal Space Program just sitting there in the passenger seat in placement there of Starman. And the reason I again iterate that this was not a wasted flight, there was millions of people watching this all in the live stream. The second most popular YouTube stream ever. Think of all the kids watching from school just wanting to get into this industry. Future astronauts and explorers. In signing off, this is the Tesla Roadster orbiting the solar system for however many millions of years. Also a big shout out to Eric Hammond who was just awesome in helping me with a lot of my installation issues and uh, getting mods working properly. So thanks very much Eric, appreciate that mate. In the tile in the bottom left today we have a stock-ish scale uh, Falcon Heavy mission so check that out if you want to do this in the stock game. In the top right my latest video and in the bottom right a video that YouTube has chosen just for you by some insane little robot. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.